Hello, I'm back. So I want this to be um, a follow-up to the session where we implemented the, uh, the demo code. Um, and uh, it's basically explaining how I added already uh, some compression to the, um, to the demo data which is basically very simple. I'm going to do one, what I did, because I did this just after I recorded, I recorded the previous session. So this is just uh, run length encoding, which is a type of compression. Um, you can probably search for that. Um, uh, you can find ad probably, you know, in the Wikipedia, a very nice article. It's going to be uh, better explained than what I can explain now. But, you know, getting long story short basically what we're going to do or what i did already um is that you know the this is data uh we recorded uh from the demo the, so that was me playing the game and um and this is just uh this is just uh the output from the controls which you can see uh it repeats quite a lot so there's a lot a big chunk here of zeros which means that I was not touching the controls. And then four, which is whatever it is, it really doesn't matter, but see there's there's a repeating pattern here. So this is a demo that I think this is more or less what we had when we finished that session. So we recorded 600 bytes uh, of data here. And, um, and let's take a look how it looks because it's kind of short uh, because of you know, it uses a lot of space in a very silly way. So let's take a look. So that's the demo starting. Yeah, there was also, this has a bug that is fixed already in the code I'm going to show you today. If you pay attention to the expressions, not all of them play. Um, so this game implements um, a priority based, well, let's, so that, that was it. It's a quite short demo. Okay, so let's watch that again. But it's quite short. I mean, it says 600 bytes, which is a good chunk of data, and it's still pretty slow. So that's quite short, right? Um, yeah, and I was mentioning, you know, uh, the game implements, uh, uh, right. So the, the MSX, uh, like the CPC and the Spectrum 120K, uh, has a AY chip that has three channels. So what I'm doing, I'm using two channels for the music and one channel, one channel for the effects. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And what I do is, um, I have here, um, Let's take a look to that. I have here, um, so this is a priority based uh, um, effects player I implemented on that channel. Basically what it does, every single effect has, you know, they are ordered from zero to the novice, the last one. So what I do is um, one sound, for example, this fire, one play unless there is nothing playing or what is playing is of lower priority that could be bleep and none which means that it will interrupt a bleep but it won't interrupt for example explosion um so you put them in order uh, it's a mixture of importance uh, or relevance and actually which ones are noisier because if the explosion is quite noisy uh, it's okay that it kind of silence the fire of 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 your ship. Um, so there was a bug in that um, because it has to be able to interrupt its own level of priority. So one explosion should interrupt another explosion, and and it was not doing that. But anyway, we will see that when we load the fixed version. So uh, so let's get to the current version. And uh, see, we're looking already at the code here that is quite different. So there is no, there's no duplication. So, 
so the compression that I implemented here is basically ooh. Uh, oh yeah, because I change. Uh, sorry, I just fix that. Yeah, I I also changed the compiler, so I need to compile everything again. What? Hmm. What's going on? Is I'm already master, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Just clean. In the library and make oh this is interesting oh because there is something wrong here okay so oh let's fix that bear with me a second so um, the player library here when we do clean is not actually removing the library Right, is that correct? Let's fix this. So the library, when it cleans, it cleans this, 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 and it should be cleaning also the library. And the library is compiled. Uh, uh, um, it's compiled. And it's copied to the upper directory. So it means that it's here. Oh, that's wrong. Okay. So this probably needs to delete the library and when it's doing the clean. So, and also clean, clean, it's called leave, right? So it's clean. Yeah, because I changed the compiler and the format of the library has changed. Okay, so let's go with this one. Okay, cool. So we were talking about the demo, right? So yeah, that now is compiling the latest version. So, um, so basically the uh, R L E, uh, the run length encoding and compression I'm implementing is very simple. So I'm always starting two bytes. The first byte uh, always tells me how many times I have to repeat the next byte. So in this case, do you remember in the previous version? Uh, well, in the previous version we saw that there were a lot of zeros at the beginning. So in this case, I'm telling that. Yeah, I need to replay nine times zero. Um, so yeah, it I mean, the, the compression is quite high because it's, this is tw 29 in hex. So that's a lot of force that we are repeating, right? So this is actually 300 bytes, which is way less than the 600 bytes. Well, I mean, it's half, right? Um, and I changed the approach here. Um, because, right, so, well, no, I didn't change the approach, so, but the, the effect is slightly different, um, because in the previous version, you basically, um, compress code when you're recording until you run out of bytes, which is the same here, but it depends on how the compression goes. So this is very similar to what we did before. But instead of just getting the controls and putting that into that uh, memory buffer that we had to store uh, the, the, the input from the player, um, this is also doing the compression, um, which, you know, I said it was not ideal because you had to write this in C and also it has to run inside the MSX because you play in the game in the MSX and you dump the memory to have uh, that recording data. Yeah, but it's basically we can we I would my plan for today is to go through this and it will be useful for me also to do a little bit of code review to be just completely sure that everything is correct. So let's take a look how it looks now. Um, there are also um, other changes I think. Uh, well, there is a fix for the sound, and I changed a few things like 
uh, to make it look nicer, you know. For example, uh, it's not simulating that you press fire anymore. So it's pretty clear that it's a demo. I changed the text and a little bit. And I play <laughs> I played the game a few times until I managed to record something that it was slightly better than when I, what we had before. For example, I have already completed two chains, so I have two power-ups. Cheers. See, I mean it's 200 bytes, and I think we have We've been running the demo for longer now than the previous one that was 600. I still don't want it to be too long, but just something, you know, enough so you can see how the game plays. And it kind of has that effect of just, I think it's enough, isn't it? Let's watch that again and let's pay attention to the explosions. See, those are three explosions. So now, because we are interrupting explosion with another explosion, we are not missing explosions, basically. I mean, it still works fine with the with the enemy fire, with the player fire, and everything. It's just that it was a little bit off uh, with explosions, probably. Anyway, so. This is um, how it looks now, and as we have seen, um, it is quite compressed, right? So let's take a look. I mean, basically, the way the compression works is uh, similar to what we had before. So how we record the, the session. So basically, we need to enable this flag. And yeah, we set the record limit now is 300. Uh, instead of 600 and um, yeah when we're recording I have we have a few more things now because so this is the buffer record count is well what is our position position in the buffer and then uh, we track in what is the last uh, the last byte we got out of the controls and we are going to count here how many times we repeat um, to do the, the compression. So yeah, when we have that, if that is defined, so initially we don't, yeah, we started with this at the beginning of the buffer. Um, so I'm using this one to actually detect, to start the compression cycle um, because um, I mean, we could be improving this compression because uh, uh, currently the controls only use six bits on in one byte, so we could be using those high bits to add more things. Um, like, for example, if we find uh, a sequence of of bytes that never repeat instead of making the result worse because basically you're going to say you know you need to repeat the next byte one time that's not compressing anything instead you are using more space because you're using two bytes to encode one byte but if you have for example if you detect that you have for example uh, five bytes that are there are no re repetitions in those five bytes they are completely different you could be saying setting those two bytes those two bits uh, to signal a flag and say that you know um, the next, uh, the, you know, this is is coming five bytes that don't repeat instead of repeat the next byte five times. So that could save some space. Um, but um, in this case, this data is really good and it com is compressing very well. So uh, we don't really need to do that. But anyway, so I'm using that because this is impossible value. So it means that it's going to detect that um, the the stuff we're getting for the controls, this this current byte is definitely different to the previous we had. Uh, so it's going to start the compression cycle. And um, record repeat is zero because we the first time we don't have anything to repeat. So uh, so we start with zero. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we do we, we read the controls here and um, so control is different it has to be different than the last one 
or well okay Rico repeat is 255 this is me being pedantic I guess because I don't think we're going to have <laughs> any input that repeats more than 255 but because we only we track the repetitions with one byte we don't want an overflow so I'm adding this but I don't think this this is ever this not, doesn't have any effect because I think we we're going to be long enough without changing our control so this actually issues so forget about this but basically uh we know that we start with record last being uh you know all the bits set to one which is an impossible value here so this is going to be true first time we run okay now if we have any any value in record repeat means that uh, we have you know an, something to output into the buffer but the first time because record repeat is zero this is never executed so instead we know that the record last is control and we know we have to repeat once because we have one byte right and you know we have another loop we get the control if this is the same so the new control is the same as the last one we have a repetition so we increment um we increment record repeat um if it's not true because record repeat is going to be at least one uh because we know that you know that's the first time the first thing we do is to set that to one what we're going to do is to put the number of times it's repeated in the buffer and and after that we're going to put what is the byte that we need to repeat and what we're checking here is that if we get to this 300 here, it means that, you know, we just, the buffer is completely full and we have to stop recording. So we break the, the game loop and we go outside. So this is pretty much very basic run, line, run length encoding in C <laughs> running on MSX. <laughs> um, so yeah, this runs when there's, you know, do you remember how we did the recording? So I play the game. Uh, when we get to the end, um, I think I put something here to make it nicer. So it will record in, it will block until I stop using the controls and um, we exit the game. And then at that point, we dump the memory into a file and we import that into, into a build. Then when we play in, we don't define record anymore and we're going to play back the demo. So the demo has, um, so in the, for the demo, we have, blah, 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 blah. yeah, we have something similar. So basically, uh, the demo is just demo is just a flag that is going to tell us if the demo is started or not. So here in the menu, here down below. Um, so we have in the menu we initialize those values, and uh, basically we have a counter here. If the demo, uh, I think we we'll reuse that later. <laughs> yeah, do we do that? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Anyway. So we increment this when we go to a number 192. This could be a constant somewhere, but this is the how long we wait in the menu until the demo starts, um, which is something that I didn't think about. But now the if the menu has music, um, it means that whatever I do with the music, the music will be interrupted after this amount of time. Um, so I still don't know how, what I'm going to do, but I'm probably going to put some sort of um, maybe a short loop or some sort of ambient music uh, waiting for you to start the game. Um, and I guess that would be fine if um, it gets interrupted because you're going to see the, the demo, I think. I'm still thinking about that anyway. Um, so basically, this sets the flag, uh, and when the flag is set, um, whoop, we go here, and when we get into the game, uh, because demo is set, instead of writing the controls normally, uh, what it's going to do is uh, feed 
uh, here the controls from the demo data we have recorded. So basically, uh, so it dem demo repeat is zero, which means that you know the first time uh, you know, we start with so demo repeat is, is what is going to count how many times we have used the byte that we're repeating, right? So because it's zero, it means that we start in the cycle. Um, so we set demo repeat to whatever we got. Yeah, because we're not going to have any encoded data that we're going to repeat zero times. We are going to repeat at least once, right? Worst case, but it's very likely to be more than that. So if there is no demo repeat, demo repeat, it means that we need to load the stuff in here. So we get, uh, we could be doing this differently, actually. We're going to improve this. Yes, because so basically, uh, oh no, it's okay. Forget about that. <laughs> so initially, demo repeat. The, the we start the cycle assuming that we have finish repeating the last byte that we didn't have any. So because it's the first time this is zero, then we get how many times we need to repeat uh, the control byte, and then then we get that control byte here into control. If the counter that we keep incrementing gets to record limit, it means that we have, uh, let me think, oh, this is not right. This is not correct. I think, this okay so what I'm doing here is I'm checking that the counter gets to record limit but that means that the last data we got from there is not being used um, because before we have a chance of 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 processing that data and feeding that into the, the game we are exiting so it should be the other way around so if the counter so we should be checking that on the next loop so we when we run uh, out of data that we need to repeat. So basically, so forget about this for now. Oh, wait a second. Just remove everything. Yeah, a little bit. Let me fix that. Oh, yes. Anyway, so yeah, forget about this part here for now. So basically, we have we don't have anything to repeat yet. So we get how many times we need to output that byte and we get the byte and we increment the, the pointer, the counter in demo data twice. So, you know, we feed to the game uh, this control and in the next loop, uh, because uh, demo repeat is not zero, we still have data to repeat. So we keep decrementing that variable and we keep repeating the same control. When we got to zero, uh, we check if we got to the limit and we didn't get to the limit. Now, we get to the limit after, so after repeating the last byte, basically. So it was wrong the way it was. See, I mean, this is code review. It's really useful. So let's take a look. It should play the same. Well, it, it would look the same because we were missing the last byte with the last repetition. Uh, and I'm not sure how much that, that was, but... Um, I guess we could compare this. We can compare this after we finished recording this video, <laughs> I guess. Um, but it should last a little bit longer now because we are wasting basically two bytes of the demo data. Well, I'm not sure, but it's definitely, that was definitely wrong. So I'm going to fix that. Um, so this one, and it's a very clean change. So this is, um, 
last. Uh, okay, so I guess that was it. Cool. So yeah, I mean, that's all, basically. Uh, that's what the demo is doing. Um, so yeah, so it's using half of the memory and it's, it's, it lasts longer. I mean, it lasts even longer if we play in PAL instead of NTSC. <laughs> So yeah, another change, yeah, I wanted to, I didn't like that, you know, the blinking when you press fire, because you aren't actually, you're not playing, so this is a demo, so I wanted to make a distinction, so it's not you playing. Uh, yeah, I rearranged the, instead of demo mode, I re rearranged the text to be, we have some space there, so, I put it there, and, you know, everything else is the same, I didn't play too bad in this go so I might even leave it like this uh, unless I change the stage obviously because if I change the stage uh, um, yeah the demo data won't be valid anymore and um, yeah I don't know I was a little bit shaky moving a little bit too much so it was no if I was not moving that much um, I would probably get more data in those 300 bytes um, and the demo will be longer yeah it's okay I mean I got I got two power-ups here which is two chains completed uh, that's not something I managed to get I think in the last video <laughs> I tried with a lot and I couldn't really the last video the previous one Yeah, I think it looks it looks okay. And actually, I think can I try? Yeah, the pause works. Yeah, because it's just um, instead of getting the input from the uh, controller of the player, we are just getting that data from the demo. So I mean, I can play the game now just normally. Probably worse than in the demo because the demo is. See, actually, I didn't get the chain here. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I think that's one. Of, it's going to be one of the one of the highlights of the game, really, uh, because um, oh, well, you get killed. That's not what I wanted. But, um, so the basic idea is that um, so there is a memory factor here, like in any shooter map, although. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the randomness of the bullets uh, because I think it makes the game a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah, but I think, uh, you know, there's a memory factor. You need to remember where the enemies are going to appear on the screen. And it's not just remember where they're going to appear so you can kill them. It's also remembering that you need to kill at least nine in a row so you need for example in this case it's better if you cross this way the screen then this way and then see but I just I missed the first one so again so it's better you go this way and you cross this way you kill this two and no it was too slow um, yeah, so it's about remembering the patterns they, where the enemies appear and also you allow them to be longer on the screen before you kill them. That also helps to make another change. I mean, you remember in the demo, I at this point I had already two power ups, so I managed to. Oh, Oh, I was so close. Oh no, I did it. I was, I was going. I thought I missed that one. So yeah, I mean, it's not that difficult. Um, I'm actually not very good playing my game, <laughs> but in theory, that is going to be one of the highlights of the game because without the power-ups, um, 
the game can be a little bit difficult, obviously. I mean, that's true for any shooter map, isn't it? Um, I mean, I've been, I'm still adjusting the, the power of the weapons, so I don't want the, the worst weapon to be too bad, but it can really be too good because otherwise there is no really progression when you get power-ups. And I also have some limits, so it's not like I can put a huge firepower here because uh, I have that many... Ooh, that was close! I have that many sprites that I can have on, on the screen. And it's not just the sprites, it's also... Uh, the number of entities I can move. Per, per frame really, so it's a little bit of, of both, I guess. See, there, there's no way I can get to the other side of the screen to kill that other type of enemy, anyway. So, yeah, so that's how the compression of the demo works. Um, and I think this is going to be a pretty short session. I mean, obviously, obviously, I was not actually coding, <laughs> which means that Redux coding is probably not very accurate. But yeah, I I implemented this almost um, the same night after I finished the, uh, the recording decision or when I was implementing the demo. I just had a prototype very quickly. But anyway, I just wanted to explain this because I think it's quite interesting. Um, uh, it's a type of compression that is really, really, really simple and really easy to implement, and um, and it can save um, a lot of space if you have a lot of uh, data that repeats, like uh, in this case. So, yeah, I think this is going to be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember, if you um, don't want to miss any other videos, just you can subscribe if you want, um, like or dislike if you don't like it. It really doesn't make a lot of difference to me. Um, and, and I'm not sure what it's going to be next. Um, I, I think what I should be doing next is probably working on some more graphics um, for... Because I think the first stage is finished, including the, the boss. Uh, the engine is pretty much done. I think this hasn't changed since the last uh, video, I think. So we still have 12K. Um, I upgraded the compiler from... Uh, well, I was using an old version. I was using 3.6, I think. Um, because uh, when I tried 3.7, I found a couple of regressions. Um, the generated code was uh, using more space. Um, so I didn't want to use that version and then I think 3.8 was released when I was in the middle of a project and I didn't want to change the compiler because it was uh, was almost finishing and it was too risky to break stuff um, because this one is pretty early uh, I thought mm, okay let's try the latest version which is 3.9 and it looks like 3.9 is slightly better because I have now more bytes free which is is really good I mean, um, usually um, if the code uses less space, it's because there is less code and less code is faster uh, very often. So I don't know. It looks okay to me. I think um, I'm going to keep an eye just in case something breaks. But so far, I like I like this version compared with 3.6. So I'm going probably to stay with uh, 3.9. Um, uh, so yeah, I have a lot of space here. So it's just working on the graphics and and starting to work in the next stage. Um, do the level design, probably start adding more enemies. Um, I think there was, um, let me see, how many enemies do we have um, in here? So we have, well, it looks like more, but we have four enemies and a boss. So, which is boss one, actually. So we have four enemies. 
So yeah, I think probably adding another four enemies for this four, you know, four enemies per stage is kind of like a good target, but I think I may run out of memory because I can do that uh, uh, before I can actually do that. So um, yeah, I might mix some of the, so yeah, I mean, it's probably okay. You can still see some enemies from the first stage in the second stage. I don't think anyone will be really bothered by that. I mean, some of the stuff like the ground turrets, yeah, repeating those is probably not a good idea because it's, it feels like it's part of the stage. Um, but, and you know, the, the basic enemy, which is the rotor, that is the one that it comes at you. Um, I think it's called rotor or it was Elix. See, that's the problem. You name the enemies and then I don't remember what, it, what they are, really. One of them. I think it's probably, I mean, the disc is pretty much, it's clear what it is, it's the disc, right? <laughs> oh, right, so this is actually, oh, but I think I'm missing one enemy. Oh, uh, because, no, it's actually missing one enemy here. So, let's see, we have my phone a bug. So let's take a look at the map. Yeah, it's actually what a second. Why is that even this even working? Uh, so ooh, I see why because I'm using a table here. And I think I'm using a table, or I think I was using a table at any table like here. So um, it's, I'm not using this anyway. So it really doesn't matter because according to the map, this will have this ID, which is basically uh, pa, 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 pa. so it's the type of enemy minus the ground, which is the first one. So it's a zero, one, two, three, four, which is in the array. So this really doesn't matter. And the boss is never in the map. So the boss can have the destructoid ID and nothing is going to change. Anyway, I'm going to fix that because it's better. So, so yeah, because then I will add another enemy after this one and then I will get the wrong one and I will wonder mm, what's going on. Yeah. So anyway. So yeah, it's uh it's not that then it's not four enemies, it's actually five enemies. That's really good. So yeah, I might share some of them. For example, this one, this is the one that comes flying at you and stays a little bit on the screen, fire fire uh is firing uh three bullets at a time. I think this is likely to be one that can be repeated easily. And yeah, that, that would be repeating this one would be quite nice. So yeah, I probably added more enemies. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, not sure how many stages I'm probably going to aim to have probably five, which is sounds not, not sure. Sounds to me like quite a lot, but it may not be a lot. I don't know. Um, yeah, probably five stages will be decent size for a game. Anyway, enough for today. I already say goodbye. I'm still talking. So we'll see you next time. Bye.